So it's obviously been quite an eventful six months since the brilliant OnePlus 70 Pro first landed in Blighty. We've now got a partially shaven Saint Bernard acting as our Prime Minister and at long last my prayers have been answered and the apocalypse has arrived with gusto, complete with the usual raft of bellends, bulk buying bog roll for no bloody reason on God's green earth. And it's been quite a big time for the tech world as well. A lot of big launches may have been delayed by all this shenanigans but we've still seen some impressive smartphones unveiled. From the premium Galaxy S20 and the Oppo Find X2 Pro to the great value Realme X50 Pro 5G. I've been using the OnePlus 70 Pro on and off for the past several months and I enjoy returning to it when I'm in between review devices. So with the impending launch of the OnePlus 8 just around the corner, here's my full long term review and how it compares to some of the fresh new kids on the block. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So back in my original review, I remarked on what a bloody massive Godzilla sized phone this really is. And to be honest, by now I'm kind of getting used to this size of device. At least the OnePlus 70 Pro is still a comfy clutch thanks to that curvy slimline finish. It is of course a slippery wee bugger but I've somehow managed to avoid dropping it in the past six months which frankly is a miracle worthy of your man Jesus. However I may not have dropped it but I've certainly shoved the OnePlus 70 Pro in plenty of pockets and bags with other smartphones and plenty of sharp scratchy things and so far touch wood that back end is still beautifully smooth and blemish free. And I love that OnePlus has bucked a trend for shiny glass and went with a frosted finish instead. You can definitely kiss goodbye to those bloody annoying smudgy greasy fingerprints. Meanwhile, flip it on over and I've still got the original screen protector here on the OnePlus 7T Pro and it's doing great on the ever so slightly scratched up. And sure it lacks a proper dedicated IP rating for water resistance, but the OnePlus 7T Pro has been absolutely drenched several times in the past few months by that inclement British weather, not to mention on one or two occasions absolutely soaked in beer as well, and it's none the worse for wear. So overall, on the most part, the OnePlus 7T Pro is crushing it for durability, a well-deserved 4 Jason Stathams out of 5. And any fans of Netflix? Netflix, YouTube, Prime Video or whatever should definitely consider a purchase as well because of that OnePlus 70 Pro's gorgeous full view display. Six months on, it's still a stunner, definitely ticking all of those metaphorical boxes one by one. It's a good size for smashing out a movie or two on long journeys, that Quad HD Plus resolution keeps everything sexily sharp and the colours can be fully customised from impressively natural hues to slap you in the face vivid visuals. Now pop-up camera action also means no notch or pinhole action getting in the way either. And of course OnePlus was one of the very first phone manufacturers to really embrace the higher screen refresh rates which makes skimming through the UI and your apps feel fast and smooth. Sadly there is no dynamic option when it comes to the screen refresh rate, you've either got to have it on 60Hz or 90Hz, no mixture of the two. So it basically comes down to do you prefer a smooth UI or do you favour battery life? And also yes there's no 120Hz option which has become increasingly popular in flagship phones in 20 2020. But you know what, I find the jump between 90Hz and 120Hz is a lot less jarring than the jump between 60 and 90Hz. It's a lot less noticeable, at least to my tired old peepers. You've also got full HDR10 support on the OnePlus 70 Pro with a lot of supported content on the likes of Netflix. And no complaints when it comes to the stereo speakers either, which are loud, punchy and fully Dolby Atmosified. It is a bit of a shame there's no headphone jack action here on the OnePlus 70 Pro, especially when manufacturers like Sony are actually bringing it back for 2020, so fingers crossed for the OnePlus 8. But that said, the Bluetooth connectivity has been absolutely fine. The only time I really have any problems with that connection is when you get down to the dregs of the battery life, and then sometimes it can be a little bit patchy, a little bit stuttery, but apart from that, it's perfectly dependable. And precisely nobody will be shocked and stunned to hear that the performance has held up rather well over the past six months. That Snapdragon 855 Plus chipset has 8 gigs of RAM in backup, so yeah, good luck trying to get the OnePlus 7D Pro to stumble or slow down even a bit. You try bumping up PUBG to the maximum graphical settings and the top frame rates, but you'll still get a beautifully smooth game and experience with an instant response to every swipe, so you've got no excuse when you are mercilessly gunned down. It's not the phone, it's most definitely you. And of course that fanatic mode is still great for blocking all notifications and making sure that you get the lion's share of your internet bandwidth as well, so like I said, no excuses. And the battery life is still perfectly respectable as well, although as before, keeping that 90Hz refresh setting on full time does definitely leach your power. On really busy days with a lot of screen on time at that 90Hz refresh rate, I found that I've definitely struggled to get to bed without plugging it in just for 10 minutes to give it a quick top up. But keep it at the 60Hz rate or just make sure you're not switching on every couple of minutes to check your messages and apps and such forth and you'd generally be absolutely fine. And on top of that, the likes of gaming and movie streaming and stuff like that doesn't seem to leach the battery 
any worse than using any other app, so that's good news for gamers and movie lovers. Plus, while the likes of Oppo and Realme have outdone Warp Charge 30T with their recent flagships, this wee bugger will still charge up in a very timely fashion once it is hooked up to power. So for instance, while the Oppo Find X2 Pro can fully recharge with just 35 minutes at the plug, which is pretty bloody marvellous, OnePlus 7T Pro generally hits around sort of 75% in that same time frame. Again, though, still really bloody good. Now on the software side of things, the OnePlus 7T Pro came with Android 10 straight out of the box, and it's been kept fairly fresh with reasonably regular updates. Although at the time of shooting, I am still stuck on the January Android security patch. Nothing particularly revolutionary has ticked through in the past few months. It's just been your general bug fixes and little tweaks weeks here and there as well. Though I have noticed that the stupid screen brightness issue I was having before has not been rectified, so occasionally if it's on auto brightness, it just won't bother to do its bloody job and it'll still be crazy dim. I'll have to manually override it, which is a bunch of arse. But anyway, for a closer look at all of that Oxygen OS goodness, definitely go check out my full tips and tricks guide for the OnePlus 7T Pro. And another area where I haven't really noticed any updates over the past few months is that camera tech. And sure, while those optics aren't quite as dependable or as sexy as they are on a few rivals, I'm honestly rarely let down by them. If you've got kids, cats or whatever, you'll find that the 7T Pro can grab clean looking shots and home movies as long as the conditions are half decent. Travellers are well catered for as well with those wide angle and telephoto lenses which boost your options when you're grabbing pics of interest and scenery. And while the HDR situations can prove a little bit problematic, the OnePlus 70 Pro still comes pretty well as long as you just take your time a bit. Plus that night mode is still really good at balancing out a shot in very low light conditions. But anyway, I've already done a full in-depth OnePlus 70 Pro camera review and there's not much really seems to have changed at all over the past few months. Just go check that out for all you need to know. So that is it and as we approach the grand reveal of the OnePlus 8 smartphones, is it worth grabbing a OnePlus 70 Pro in 2020? Well, you may well find this bad boy is heavily discounted in the next month or so, as it is rumoured that the OnePlus 8 smartphones will be launching early to mid-April, although I'm not entirely sure how much truth is really behind that, especially given the current circumstances with our good old mate Corona. And personally, i definitely still say go for the standard OnePlus 70 instead. It packs most of the best features of the Pro, barring that full view Quad HD Plus screen and the telephoto lens. So if you spy that one in a discount, definitely dive in balls first. But anyway, that is what I think, but what do you think? Have you been using the OnePlus 70 or the OnePlus 70 Pro? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down below. You're excited about the fresh new OnePlus 8? Stay tuned for all you need to know on those bad boys. Hopefully it'll be launched really, really soon, and I'll be able to get my greasy mitts all over them. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and that notifications bell. Cheers everyone, love you!